Hi friends, we're live at Microsoft Build here in Seattle and I am joined by the amazing MK Bajwa. Uh, thank you so much Scott for having me. <laughs> it's great to see you here and um, we've just got out of the keynote for day two. We are here at day two. Yes. Uh, so what did you think? Oh, it was amazing. I think amazing announcements today, uh, yesterday at keynote by Satya and today by Charles, Ryan and many people. So amazing. I love the energy here today. Well, there was a lot of demos. That's yes. what I was, I was really impressed by how many demos there were. Yeah. And they were mostly live, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we tried to, uh, we tried to maintain build standards. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's one of the key things at build. You have to have live demos. Yeah. Um, but I did notice that maybe one of your features that you've been working on might have given a bit of an appearance in one of those demos. I'm so glad Scott you noticed. <laughs> yes, bring your own model got uh, featured in Satya's keynote and also later today by Ryan also spoke about like how bring your own model is bringing some goodness in Copilot Studio and Power Platform. Yeah, it's um, bring your own model. So just give us a bit of background. Where why, why would I want to bring my own model? And what model am I bringing and where am I bringing it to? Okay, okay. I'm glad you asked the question. So, you know, like we already have many managed models available, like GP, uh, GPT 4.1, 4.0 Mini, 4.0. This is in Copilot Studio. It's in Copilot Studio. Yeah. Uh, in France or in your agent, we use them. So, a great goodness. But every time we hear there are so many new models getting launched, there's 5.4 by Microsoft, there are, there are Mistral models that people love a lot so there's so many goodness in the amazing model ecosystem that we have some are great at reasoning some are great with images some are great with text so every model has its own strength mm. and we were we wanted that you don't you are not blocked by Microsoft launching it on Copilot Studio and you can directly get uh, tapped into that 1900 plus amazing ecosystem that we have in Foundry so 1900 that, plus yes, models yes yes wow. amazing ecosystem so wait, so, so so let me, let me get this straight. So can we now pick from 19,000 models? 1900. Uh, yeah, yes. 1900 models, yeah. <laughs> yes, but, uh, but in, let's in, go. And bring that into Copilot Correct. Studio. Correct. So the thing is that uh, all of these models are already part of your Azure App Foundry. So you have these models over there. What you have to do is like now bring them into Copilot Studio. And now it would seem that these are two different systems. I'm going to get it connected together. Uh, in When you come to Copilot Studio, when you use bring your own model, you get a very simple form which asks you to fill in information that you see in your Foundry, like URL, endpoints, and API keys. And just two or three fields in, you are connected to that model that you have in that boundary and like you we are not stopping at 1900 plus models <laughs> because you can no. <laughs> because uh, you can also fine tune those models so every enterprise has its own need so even if you are starting with some base model you want to change something on top of it and when you're fine tuning it making it better you would want to use that in when you're working in Cobalt Studio so that is possible now with this experience so it's really bringing Foundry and Copilot Studio together so that they are so they're like closing the loop. It's so much part of the same offering now. Exactly. Exactly. That's amazing. So um, I've used prompts a lot in Copilot Studio. Okay. Um, Do you love them? I love them. I okay. just I, I absolutely love them. This is so great to be able to just add in that little bit of uh, AI magic inside yeah. your topics. Um, to perform a certain task, you know, like image recognition and, and or reasoning over images or uh, doing sort of natural language summaries or, you mm. know, creating insights into things. It's just like a, a multi-tool. It's like a Swiss army life. You can just yes. do anything with it. It was just yes. so great. Um, and yeah, I do tend to pick the model that I get the best response from. Yeah. Um, so why would I need one of these other models? I mean, what, what's, what, do you have any examples that perhaps you could share about like, why would I pick like Phi or one of those other models? Yeah. So every model comes with its own strengths. Like for example, some of these Mistral models are preferred in certain geographical region where they would prefer using Mistral or others. Uh, also, the reasoning models have its own strength that you would not find in other models itself. So when you're, or it depends upon kind of prompt that you're working with, if mm -hmm. it requires a detailed reasoning, you'll prefer a reasoning model rather than a standard model. There are certain models that work 
look amazing with images because in prompts you also support images and documents. Mm. So you would prefer those models. So it is totally dependent upon your use case because for the same prompt, if you are using multiple different models, you see a slight variation. Mm. And it totally depends upon how you have structured the prompt as well. If you have kept the output very open and you have left the model to determine it, so it will do its best based on its capability to do it. Right. And specifically reasoning models because they go into so much detail, they also share some chain of thought that how they came up with answer and what went behind it. So it is dependent upon kind of use case that you are going after. So it's good to have variety there. Could you give us a bit of a demo? Yes, yes. So let's go over here. So right now I'm in my agent called Tech Support Assistant. This is the one that I uh, that we create uh, that I created like if I have some IT issues, I don't have to raise a ticket and wait for it to close for a couple of hours or sometimes days. So I want to create a agent that uses, that makes it easier for me to work with it. Mm. So in this part, I have added a prompt called AI Help Desk. So let's go ahead and check out how this AI Help Desk looks like. So as you see in, uh, in this AI help desk, I have used my Dataverse uh, tables as my knowledge source. You can also use text, images, or documents. And in this one, you are seeing that I have the person who has created the model, the IT professional, has curated list of issues and uh, the pro proper troubleshooting methods that mm. are recommended by that enterprise to work with it. Right. So that it's easier for somebody to resolve it on their own rather than waiting for the ticket to get resolved. So let's give it a shot with, yeah. okay, pick so the models. So that's the drop down that I'm familiar yes, with. Yes, But yes. look at all these additional things down at the bottom here. Yeah, right. Like on top, you have these managed models. Mm. These are the models that are provided by uh, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft, they maintain it. They ensure that they are up to date with the latest version. And below, you have these Azure AI Foundry models, which give you a uh, connection with amazing 1900 plus models. So you have this plus icon over here. So if I click on this plus icon, I can add this deployment name, base model name, and URL endpoint. And as you see in my Foundry, this information is just right there. So mm. what I have to do is just copy paste and bring this information over here. And my model is connected within these four steps itself. So if I do that, is that then available for other users in this environment? Am I adding it to the environment or is it just for my user? It's for you to uh, use uh, use as. Uh, it, uh, for, for this, more, uh, as soon as you add this particular model, it is available to you as a connector. Ah, right. So you can manage who gets access to it by managing that connector. Mm -hmm. But to begin with, as soon as I add it, it is available for me. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, wow, that's amazing. So as though I heard in the keynote talking about um, the model router as well, like picking the best hmm. model. And then there's the, in Foundry now, there's the, the leaderboards. Yeah. Is, is that a good place to start? It would, how would I pick? Is there any good resources you could perhaps share on how I pick the right model? So that would be a great place to start. One thing I'll definitely give a pointer is that whenever you're picking a model, do check that model is of type chat completion because you're working with an agent and a prompt. They require a chat kind of a conversation to happen. So definitely start with a list that ha is of a chat completion type. And yes, that from the foundry itself, it tells you the strength of each one of the models, check out the strengths and those details, and based on that, go ahead. You can go ahead and pick it up. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for showing us that. I'm really excited to give that a go and going to try out. Well, probably not all of those 1900 models, but <laughs> I, will, I will certainly give it a good run. So, um, so thank you so much. I will, I'll put a link to some of the documentation about this in the notes. Um, but thank you, MK. It's been a great pleasure to have the demo and uh, get a little sneak pre preview of your breakout session. Oh, thank you so much, Scott. Thanks for having me and uh, let me show this. I hope your, your breakout session goes very well. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much then. Until next time, cheers, everyone.